I suppose, I suppose so. so. Hello, Hello, everybody. Howdy. 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 So, so. Uh, <laughs> hey, folks. As, as always, always uh, doing an audio, audio check. check. Uh, is there no, there no sound? sound? Is there, is there echo? Is there, there some, some weird, weird extraterrestrial noise? Are you, Are ready, you ready to roll, to roll for, for initiative? initiative? Uh, uh, echo. 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 Okay. So, so let's... let's... How about this? Are we done with the echo? Sound check. Check. Mic check. Echo, Mimic. Echo, Mimic. Echo, echo, echo. So their chat is delay. Uh, so it seems like uh, there is an echo, but it might be gone now. Better, good. No, better echo. You broke the trend. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it's a 50-50. Uh, there is really nothing else for me to turn off unless you want me to turn off all my mics. Uh, so hopefully it, it sounds okay. Yes. We're going to go with yes. Final answer, because it was in caps. Uh, now you can roll for initiative again. Sweet. Ready? It's 16. Excellent. Ex yeah. M16. That's <laughs> M16. what we want. The Dungeon uh, Master is called. So, hi, everybody. Um, so, a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, this is the state of the game stream for Neverwinter. Uh, we try to do this yearly. Um, I think we actually did one around February of last year as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Forgive the camera making Thomas look blurry. It's my ring of phasing. It's not yeah. quite working right. Yeah, we, we got we to gotta help, you know, help out with there. But... Uh, or, you know, get a new camera. Uh, or get a new one camera. of those two. <laughs> but uh, for those who may not have uh, never checked in before, uh, my name is Julia or Nidacress or Triana Kavetch on Twitter. I am the community manager for Neverwinter. And, and joining I, me today is. I'm Thomas Foss, uh, lead designer on Neverwinter, aka the Mimic King. Or Skull and Crowns on Twitter. Or Skull and uh, Crown on Twitter. On Twitter. Mm -hmm. You'll forgive my drinking. I'm trying to keep hydrated. Um, so what is the state of the game? Um, just want to let out some, set out some expectations uh, in the past. We have gotten concerns about uh, not going maybe into very specific detail uh, about what we're, you know, the content, the questions, I mean, not answering some of them. Uh, a state of the game is a broad view of the game. We are going to be looking at uh, a little bit of what, ha you know, what was last year like for Neverwinter, where we are now, and what's coming to the future. The future. The future. Uh, the future is now. Uh, and Thomas, as lead designer, uh, has that broad view. He has uh, leads underneath him that kind of focus on the more granular, granular details. Um, eh, but Thomas is the, the world lives in his head. So we're basically taking a look inside Thomas's head it's today. A scary place. <laughs> so uh, we will be addressing some questions. I have, we have some stuff prepped ahead of time and then uh, we'll be opening it up to questions later. Uh, we might take some in the middle too, if there's some that like really catch Thomas's eye that he Indeed, like answer. Canis, that question about PVP, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, am I feeling better? Yes, uh, it's amazing what antibiotics can do for a person. They could actually make you feel better. Uh, let's just hope we don't all become resistant to antibiotics because that would be scary. Um, <laughs> let's see, um, what else going on? Can you turn up the volume a smidge? Um, sure. Check real quick. <laughs> Actually, I think that's the volume for mic headphones. Mic check, mic job. Check, check one. Is that better? Is that a little bit better? Uh... <laughs> hey, ranks. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't have. Um... Yeah, I have the val. I mean, I have the volume pretty much what I have it during standard uh, streams. Uh... Okay. How about now? Turn it up a little bit more. We'll get this working. I don't want to blow people's eardrums because it's been known to happen. <laughs> yeah, that fire feels good. Yeah. It's a nice cold day here. Is it? Is yeah. it cold? Uh, I don't have any music going on in the background either for our stream. So, okay. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time uh, because uh, Thomas and I actually both have a pretty hard deadline. We have a meeting right after this, uh, but we really wanted to get it done. Uh, want to get this done today uh, because there's a lot happening. I think I have six meetings after this. Well, that's... <laughs> Yeah, also finding time in Thomas' schedule is hard. Uh, but uh, for those who do really have burning M16 systems questions because there's a lot happening, March 14th is when we have the systems uh, Reddit AMA. Uh, we are, I'm planning on having the entire systems team answering questions, so we're yeah. going to try to get as many as possible. Uh, we only have an hour that day, but there will be more systems questions. Exactly. We want to really focus on uh, on your systems answers. I could answer most of them, but uh, I want to put my team to work because that's really their job and their bailiwick and really their expertise. Uh, and, and they're excited to talk about it because we've made a lot of cool changes for M16. 
<laughs> when do we get mod 17? <laughs> uh, after mod 16. It's the future. But however, here's the crazy thing, right? Uh, in, in the Neverwinter world, I'm already planning for 17. We're already working on pitches. And I'm already doing the storyline and talking with Wizards of the Coast about what we might be doing with, with mod 18. Because that's just how it works. You really got to work and plan for the future. Yep. Pretty much 2020 is just around the corner. So. <laughs> scary. Uh, so we're just going to hop straight into it. Uh, we're going to start a little bit of talking about the past. Uh, because last year, and we have all the stuff written down. Um, last year was a pretty convoluted year in terms of content. Like, there was a lot of different stuff. We started out with Lost City of Oma, which was the second part to Chult. Yep. Then we had Ravenloft, which mm -hmm. is very different. And then we had Acquisitions, Inc., even more different. Exactly. We, uh, we changed yeah. gears a lot last year. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was partial planning and partial opportunity. Uh, really, um, when we're planning things, so first of all, I'll go to Chilt. Uh, we had been planning Chilt uh, as, you know, and, uh, and Omu for a long time, and it took us a long time to build it, as I'd mentioned before in other, in other streams, right? We, I think when we first broke ground on it, we had exactly one jungle plant, mm -hmm. which is the one you can find in the Moonstone Mask. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, the uh, so it took us a long time to build all that content, and there's so much story there uh, in the Lost City of Omu and Chult that we wanted to actually build two zones out of it, plus other things, right? Plus the dungeons uh, uh, as well, and um, and uh, but we want but we didn't want to keep working in Chult, uh, although there are plenty of stories to tell. Uh, one thing we did learn from the past was uh, when we kept you guys in the frozen north for way too long, even for us designers, that got a little old, right? So we wanted to change pace. And uh, we were looking at what Wizards of the Coast was working on at the time, and we couldn't quite align with Waterdeep and the, the Dragon Heist per se. Uh, but uh, I was digging through my books, and I'm like, you know, Ravenloft. And it happened to be around October uh, when we were breaking ground on it. And I literally, I just walked around with the module book around <laughs> uh, everybody and just like showed it to them. And, and eyes were just lighting up. Ravenloft, Ravenloft. Yeah, it's such a wonderful, archaic, fantastic storytelling thing. Uh, uh, that we really wanted to do it. And my uh, content lead at the time, Randy Mosens, uh, who's also our, uh, was our lore master, uh, it's like just his bread and butter. He loved it. So that's where we dug in and dug in deep. Uh, the fun thing about Ravenloft uh, is when we went to the stream of many eyes mm -hmm. uh, for Wizards of the Coast, uh, and they let in uh, um, a bunch of uh, population and players, and it was really great meeting all the fans and stuff. And people, uh, we had our little uh, our little booth there for the uh, Neverwinter Travel Agency because mm -hmm. we're in line with Waterdeep, uh, and we were doing Ravenloft and we were passing out posters. And I swear, almost all the people that came to us were the pen and people, uh, the pen and paper players, were uh, talking about how they I ju either just finished Ravenloft uh, or were just in the middle of it or just getting started with it. Because when you're playing a campaign in pen and paper, it takes a while, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, we were uh, we were right on on target with that, and and again had a lot of fun with it. And uh, the feedback you guys gave us with the hunts and everything else was a great uh, place to uh, design player agency mm -hmm. and grow on that. So uh, so thanks for playing. Yeah. Um, so before we start talking about what kind of led to how we transitioned into M fifteen, which is the Heart of Fire, um, what like what was the biggest challenge of having to balance all three of those things? Because I know like you need three different environments, mm -hmm. you need uh, just different stories. So, what what was I guess to be to you the biggest the, challenge? Well, the challenge for me as a lead was um, was making sure that I had enough assets or ideas for all those things at the right time mm -hmm. and bringing them in. Uh, Chult we pretty much had cleaned up uh, and figured out what we wanted to do, um, and then Ravenloft uh, we broke ground and got a good story going. Mm -hmm. um, but we really. We, we knew that we had kind of lightning in the bottle with the hunts, but it took a long time to actually get it to the point where we wanted to get it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and in the meantime, uh, so I handed it off to, to uh, Randy, my lead, mm -hmm. who was running the, the show on that, and then I needed to actually get all of the, um, all the legalese and all the contract stuff done for Acquisitions Incorporated mm -hmm. and work with, uh, work with the guys up in Penny Arcade to get that story nailed down. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a lot of back and forth and... Uh, I don't know, a lot of extracurricular work uh, that, it, that we don't normally do uh, that, uh, that took a lot on my plate. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big challenge and changing gears on that. But, um, uh, but you know, um, Mike and Jerry from Penny Arcade are awesome story writers in their own right and great storytellers. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was a blast working with them. But it was a lot of changing gears and testing things different ways. 
Um, so one of the things, uh, speaking of like the Heart of Fire, we go back to Chult. Spoiler alert if for those who have not completed the M15 storyline. I apologize. Uh, but we do go back to Chult uh, for the Deep Crow. Uh, and I know that a lot of energy was spent on building the jungles. Mm-hmm. Are we planning on visiting that zone again? Ooh. Um, so, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, again, like I said earlier, there's, there's lots of stories to tell in Chult, right? Uh, Valindra's there with the Thaeans uh, as part of the story arc, if you actually read the, the Wizards of the Coast handbooks. Uh, uh, plus, there's all the cool uh, races that they do. I've always wanted to do uh, a racing event uh, in Chult because uh, Portney and Zaro, they, they hold those races, the dinosaur races. Um, so, yeah, I think that, I don't think we'll build another zone out of Chult anytime soon, but I think there's still a lot of stories to tell there. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to give you my back. I have to do no. some controlling on this side. No worries. Um, cool. Uh, just, I guess... Uh, in the kind of in the same vein with Ravenloft, we went to a different plane. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I hear that in Cryptic we're also making a magic MMO, which we're not going to be talking about today. Uh, but does traveling to other planes like Ravenloft kind of open opportunities to travel to like Ravnica or other I don't, IPs? Or I, don't, we... I don't think we're going to go to different IPs like Ravnica because the the guys down in Magic Land would clobber us. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it'd be like a uh, kill stealing. Um, however, um, I mean there are, there are plenty of astral planes in Neverwinter, uh, uh, so um, I would not put that. I would not say no to that. All right. There are airships in our game after all. <laughs> um, and then uh, just I know that we spent a lot of time, especially last year, talking about the collaborative part of, of the Heart of Fire. So we're not going to talk about that uh, specifically, but. Uh, are we going to be collaborating with the broader D&D world? Because there's D&D is pretty much everywhere these days. Mm-hmm. So Isn't that cool? It, it's, it's definitely very different than when I was a kid, <laughs> where we were shunned in the basement and you know being told that we were up to no good. So it's actually pretty awesome. But are we going to reach out to the broader uh, D&D world? Well, here's the cool thing. Uh, the broader D&D world is actually reaching out to us. Right? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's been kind of a mutual thing. Ooh, uh, like tendrils in the night. Yeah. They, <laughs> the, um, the, uh, let's see, how do I, let's, so in M16, I think we've already announced that we've got uh, Rudy Rutenberg and Satine Phoenix are actually doing VO for us. Uh, so, uh, Maze Arcana fame. And that's really neat. Uh, and that started when I met Rudy at the Stream of Many Eyes. Uh, last year, and he was actually playing Durnan, mm-hmm. and, and I'm like, "Oh man, what a shoe in! You should come, you should come VO for us." Uh, so there's that, and there's other uh, other talent from other places that have also reached out to us, or we're in talks with them, but I can't reveal any of that now. But I can say that the answer is yes. We're all, you know, we're, the, it's a big world, and it's getting bigger, and we like being a part of that world. Cool. Um, and let's see. So we're gonna kind of skip a little bit topic. Still talk about the past because last year. We had a big anniversary. It was a five-year anniversary. Um, and I'll just get this one question out of the way because I've been seeing it happen a lot. Like It's been asked in the forums and on the streams, and I believe I made a reference to it in the last stream, but I just wanted to confirm that will the sixth-year anniversary event be as big as the five-year one? Ooh. Because the five-year had a lot of goodies, a lot of stuff. So. Sure. Ask your wife. <laughs> Wait, my the wife? Fifth, <laughs> <laughs> that, so fifth year was really big, and we wanted we wanted to special uh, make that special. Um, I know we have some cool things for six year. I don't know if it'd be as big, but um, it's going to be pretty damn cool. Yeah, uh, I do know. Yeah, so because apparently you know I know more than Thomas. Uh, <laughs> it, it won't be the same as I'm fifth as uh, the fifth anniversary. Uh, no, that was a big blowout just because it was five years. Um, but uh, we are trying to keep. Uh, the spirit of updating events um, and uh, keeping them fresh. Uh, there some, will be some new. It has some cool stuff. Uh, I'm not so giving you a bucket of coal wards, but it'll be cool. <laughs> bucket of coal wards. Um, so speaking of events, and I know that there's been a lot of this, and uh, we didn't want to, you know, dodge the difficult issues. Uh, so players were asking for a refresh an event, new events for mm-hmm. a very long time, and starting last year, I think, kind of with the anniversary, and then the masquerade. Uh, and then this year with the seasons for the Call to Arms and yep. the, then and the Tales new ones, old. Tales of Old, yep. Fist of Lanterns. Getting the old dungeons out. I'm excited about that. Yep. Um, so that was really exciting to us uh, I mean, and to players at the beginning, but there were issues with these releases. Yeah, so indeed. And uh, what are we doing to mitigate that? Because so, it, is a, it is a problem to us, too. Yeah, so. it, yeah it, it's a real bummer. Um, the So here's basically how that played out. Um, 
when we touch a lot of the older content and actually try to do a refresh of it, there are parts of that content where the scripting was super fragile or uh, designed by a designer or an engineer that they're no longer here. So sometimes we miss some of the nuances on how they built stuff. Uh, and um, it's actually one of the things moving forward and definitely a big part of M16 is standardizing how we build things so that we can actually go under the hood and fix it better. Uh, but because of that, um, you, you know, um, the documents that we were going off of were based on the things that we changed, uh, the new things. So QA was testing for the new things, uh, but couldn't necessarily always find the old things. Plus, it's hard to find it when you're six or 10 or 20 people playing it versus, you know, two million people or three million people playing it. Um, so uh, that was part of the issue there. The other thing is um, I've been without a content lead for yeesh, well, uh, almost a year now. Uh, and um, and uh, but uh, starting in two months, I'm actually promoting one of my guys, uh, Salim Grant, to content lead, and that will give me uh, someone else on the team to actually have a lot more oversight on on these things, uh, so we can actually uh, really hammer them down uh, internally um, when I'm not too busy doing like the bigger picture stuff. Uh, and the third thing is, and we've actually already started this with Tales of Old, is opening them up to uh, uh, to uh, playtest. Uh, so you guys can actually uh, uh, hammer on them. As a matter of fact, one of the bugs that we missed in, in Tales of Old was one of those uh, was one of those things where we could only find it because it was broken old code. Yeah. Uh, and when we find those things, we fix them as soon as we can. Uh, but uh, but basically, uh, to recap, because I think I went all over the place on that, is uh, we are standardizing how we're building things. We're checking under the hood on the old code. I've got my engineers making a cleanup pass on that, which we didn't do before, and uh, doing more tests on it. Uh, so just because I saw a few questions uh, flash by, uh, uh, the preview of the playtest is always on PC just because we, we would have to create all new builds for console to do preview uh, builds and have those go through the, verif the, the certification process. That would take a very long time. Uh, with, um, uh, with, with the PC preview, we can update them, we can patch them whenever we need to. Exactly. Uh, it's just a lot easier. Um, so yeah, all the testing would be done there. And uh, yeah, like the one, the 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 the, the coins and the, uh, the the fables, like those things were uh, currency that could not be checked in during the preview phase, um, and that was one of the things we missed. And so we're following up, and just kind of to piggyback a little bit more on what uh, Thomas said, one of the things that we've been doing from uh, well, we totally taking credit for something you know Terramac is doing, <laughs> and the, uh, the the rest of the production team is uh, being a lot faster in addressing issues. Yeah. Uh, we have been trying to do same-day turnaround, uh, relying on hot fixes more, which the downside to that is that we have to make sure those the hot fixes get into the next update. Uh, so there's always a trade-off. If you go faster to fix things, uh, there's more room for error. But if you go slower, players miss out. So we're trying to find that sweet spot. Um, but we have heard you, and uh, it was it, it, it's a big bummer to me. I mean, when I come in the mornings and the mods tell me that something else is broken with an event, uh, I have reacted many times, like Darth Vader, no. Like, no many no's, because it's it's sad. Yeah, we don't, and I'm, and I'm sorry. We're, we are working towards fixing that, because really the goal is to get those old dungeons back to you guys, get the old events coming out, plus new events, right? Uh, a big goal for this year is to actually introduce... Uh, more events for you to play in in a better circle, uh, and uh, my goal is to make sure that those things are as bulletproof as possible. You know, and super fun, with good loot. <laughs> goats. I was warned that there would be goats here. Uh, so another question mm -hmm. I've been seeing is uh, the Tales of Old was awesome, but is the gear going to become obsolete with uh, obsolete with M sixteen? Well, um, it's no. I mean, I guess we've announced it now. M sixteen has a level cap raise. Uh, so at some point, you know, at level 80, your gear that you have now will not be as, uh, as good as what you'll need for level 80 stuff. And somebody yeah. mentioned, will there be a dungeon in M16? The, the answer is yes. Yes, there will be. Yes. Uh, it's kind of an interesting position because Undermountain is the biggest dungeon. So it's like a dungeon within a dungeon. A dungeon yeah. within a dungeon within a dungeon. And there are actually even, there are more dungeons even with the expeditions and mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. yes, expeditions. So uh, that actually does remind me that uh, some of the information, you, uh, the lights went out, the overhead lights, but I don't think you saw a loss in light quality because we have the overhead. If it does bother you, please let me know. And I'll... I look a bit more tan. I like this. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went, I've been seeing questions about uh, when are you going to release more details? Uh, we released four blogs on announcement day for M16. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more. There's 
probably a good maybe 20 additional blogs coming out, developer blogs, um, that have all de they have just a lot more details. Um, where we'll be doing another video blog. Uh, it's We're going to be promoting previews, so players will have a chance to actually go in and see it uh, and experience it more and read more details. Yeah, so. absolutely. The, uh, the idea here is uh, we don't want you to just jump into M16 day one and not know what to do or what changes are happening. We want to really, as clearly as we can, show all the changes and all the uh, adjustments that we've made to the game so that we can... Uh, so that you guys have gotten all that by you, and then once you you have everything ready to go, so when you get in the game, you can actually just enjoy it. Yep. Uh, one second, I have to answer. Yeah, and in terms of uh, doing community management, well, being community manager, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you also mentioned about playtest, right? Uh, in the preview shard. So we haven't like we there has been there's a tentative date. Uh, we are aiming for Friday, but it is not uh, set in stone. Uh, if for some reason, QA tells us that the preview build is not ready to go into preview. Uh, we will not be opening it up on Friday. Yep. Uh, but that is our tentative date. But I can tell you that my entire team uh, for the last three weeks is doing nothing but playtesting and punch lists. Uh, we're just going through the game, reviewing it, finding things, polishing, fixing bugs, playing it, playing it, playing it, going through reviewing, fixing bugs, both on a qualitative side and on just a, a, a game fix side. Uh, the blogs will not all be released at the same time as it hits preview yeah. because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slam you all with like 15 to 20 blogs on that one day. Um, it's they're gonna be released over time. Uh, it's over the next few weeks. Uh, we don't we haven't announced a firm date for when uh, M16 is releasing. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, either of us to slip, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, especially I, uh, for the console. I'm sorry. I I, ma I made sure that Thomas knew that there would be high penalties if he gave any leaks that were not approved by me. Uh, because apparently I have power. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, but before we get too derailed, uh, uh, I will follow up on the M16 uh, gear, uh, when, or sorry, the Tales of Old gear, and how M16 plays into that. Uh, there are people who probably know more finer details, and if I can get that info, I will get it. Um, let's see. So... Uh, uh, I, can, I can speak a little bit to that. As, as we go into M16 uh, in Undermountain, right, where we've built five new zones, plus a new hub, uh, plus lots of other things, you know, the instances and everything else, right? So uh, you'll actually be going to level 80. If you've got good gear, that gear is going to serve you well for at least the first few zones, right? And then, But then as you get deeper, you're, and you'll be picking up new gear as you're playing, uh, and then uh, it's up to you whether you want to use the upgraded gear that you have or pick up the new gear. Uh, but by the end of level 80, um, depending on, I don't know what the balance will be at that right now, but uh, you'll probably want the new gear. <laughs> Uh, we will get to PvP. We got one more section. Um, so let's see. Uh, we're gonna go to story and content first. <clears throat> um, and so I was gonna go with uh, since last year it feels that there's been a slight departure from being aligned with Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. um, will this trend continue? Or are we gonna try to go back to being a little bit more realigned? Well, so in the olden days, we used to do four updates a year, yes. right? And with that, we could actually be in alignment because of when they do their releases for their books and their announces. Um, we uh, contractually, uh, we need to be in alignment with them at some point during the year. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, uh, but we definitely like to be. Um, it just really matter, uh, goes with the alignment of what we're doing. Because we have three releases a year, we don't always exactly align, but we either catch up or we're a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's hard to be ahead on them because we're still waiting for them to give us the content. <laughs> I mean, the cool thing about it is, right, like uh, Wizards may be producing a book in September, but we'll get the, you know, in mid-spring, we'll get the, the book ahead of time so we can start building content for it. Uh, and so it's just a matter of when we get it and when we can align. Uh, will there be more original storylines like the Cloak Ascendancy? I know that, I think that was one of the last, before the Heart of Fire, um, last original storylines. Sure. So do you, are we um, looking to do more something like that? Or? Well, um, you mean like a, a full breakaway from Wizards? Uh, well, I mean, it was, it's, I, I mean, I, no, no, I'm yeah, not Yeah, it, sure it, it, just, it was just Neverwinter centric as opposed yeah. to, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm sure that that will happen. Um, I don't have it planned for the next two modules. Um, really? Uh, but, I mean, that being said, D&D is like telling your own story. We don't follow verbatim uh, even Wizards of the Coast storylines. I mean, if you 
follow what we did with artist Kimber in the, in the North is very different than what they did in their books. Um, same thing with Undermountain. Undermountain is a story where Hallister is changing out his dungeon every day. Uh, and, and Wizards of the Coast designed the book like that, so the, the DM can actually uh, apply that to their, to their players, right? Uh, I always think of D&D as kind of like the pirate code. It's more like a, a set of guidelines, right? <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, and uh, so with that in mind, we'll be telling our own stories even in Undermountain. Uh, using some of their main characters, of course. Alistair, come on. Uh, but uh, a full breakaway? Uh, maybe? I think, I think that uh, in the coming year, we'll be focusing, we'll definitely be focusing on some of our, our own Neverwinter characters more. Um, you know, um, but I'm not going to, I almost gave something out there, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> uh, the, uh, we're not going to talk about specific classes. Uh, the Great Weapon Fighter will be named uh, Barbarian. Yep. Uh, but there will be individual class blogs. So we gave the class blog intro. That is not the only blog that's going to be about classes. I, we actually have a blog for each and every class coming out. Uh, the first two classes that have a blog are Cleric and Paladin. Uh, I think Barbarian will be in the second set of individual class blogs. Uh, so we'll be discussing more, and then you'll also be able to experience things on preview as well. I can, I can tell you a little bit about this, uh, why the name changes. Um, with, uh, when we built Neverwinter, uh, it was basically during the time of 4th Ed, and we were working around the classes of what was going on at that time. Now that D&D 5th Ed is out, yay, uh, we wanted to be more in alignment with, with Wizards of the Coast uh, and the name changes. Believe me, if I had a Wayback Machine and I could go back, I would have changed it to Barbarian a long time ago. It would have saved us a lot of, uh, a lot more, uh, just, it just would have been a lot easier uh, and, and more correct. So, uh, so we're making that alignment change where Guardian Fighter, my class, uh, is now Fighter. And, uh, and the Great Weapons Fighters are Barbarians. Now, that doesn't mean that Barbarians can't wear armor. As a matter of fact, uh, there's Battle Ragers and there's other subclasses of things. Uh, and I'll let the systems guys get into that. But, uh, but as they grow, uh, we can, it's just like your Great Weapon Fighter, just with a cooler name. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently some people don't like the, the way you abbreviate Barbarian, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've not even tried to abbreviate it, so. It's Barbie. Oh. And I personally like it. I thought it was BBN. Because Barbie's amazing. <laughs> uh, and uh, so let's, there's an obligatory question when we talk about story and content, uh, which is any new race or class coming up? Yes. We can confirm it's not M16, though. It is not M16. No. But yes. It, uh, <laughs> a race or class are, are in the works for this year? Yes. For the next couple of modules. Stay, so, stay tuned. There you go. There is an answer. That's the yes. closer you're going to get. <laughs> that's, the, that's all the answer I'm going to give you, but the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> uh, the people who were invited to the early access was a very small pool on purpose just because it's a lot of feedback. So if you did not get invited this round, if we were to have another early access program, uh, we would have to weigh how this one went. There were certain fact factors that might uh, make it so that we don't have one in the future, but... Uh, we will keep people in mind for future playtests if they happen. But I, I also want to say, uh, I do want to give a shout out for our, our, our playtesters, uh, uh, the handpicked few. Uh, they gave us uh, some great feedback on, uh, on number crunching and systems and the focus that we needed to give. And uh, it really did help the game, uh, and it's going to help everybody else out there. And you'll see that in preview. So, so thanks to everyone there. So finally, PvP. Uh, will PvP receive any major updates in upcoming releases? I have it on my schedule. Uh, and again, so I'm going to talk about, uh, I, I've said this before, uh, we couldn't do PvP until we really went back and balanced the powers and, and, and the classes again, which is exactly what we've been doing for M16. Um, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we got that right because, uh, because we needed to, right? We needed, there needed to be a shift in the game. Uh, when we first created Neverwinter, I don't really think that we thought it would last this long. Well, I mean, we did, but but you you, you don't see what's going to happen in the future with how you're crunching numbers or building things. Uh, this is true of, of mini games, and we did exactly the same kind of uh, ship riding on uh, on Star Trek as well, uh, where we just needed to adjust the powers and get things going. And that's really what we've done with the game, and what we've done with the classes and powers. And with that new foundation, we can actually look into uh, PvP because I'm a huge PvP player. Helped design some of the maps. Uh, 
and uh, and I believe me, uh, I was actually I'm talking daily with my guys about PVP, and we're testing it. It's part of our part of our internal play tests as we're building the classes and balancing them. We are also testing lots and lots of PVP, and I can say I hold number two on, on the uh, on the scoreboard so far. Who's number one? I'm not gonna say. Okay. Not me. It's almost, it's almost yeah. like it's but almost I play a guardian fighter. Number two, the guardian fighter is pretty, or as a fighter. fighter. Oh, <laughs> see that we have a dollar <laughs> jar by the way. Now that everybody says those things, you have to put a dollar in the jar. <laughs> it's almost like you anticipated my next question, which is. Uh, with the upcoming major class updates, uh, was PvP taken into consideration when testing out the changes? Oh, you mean uh, you mean putting it up on preview for testing? Uh, no, like internally when we're testing classes, like you know, say we, we make uh, these class changes mm -hmm. and we go test them on PVE, it works great. Oh, but when no, we take no, them out, yeah, you know, yeah, we're testing PvP as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. As a matter of fact, uh, that's my my first question. It's like, what do you think about this in PvP? It, it, my my system designer is getting really tired. They can almost preempt me with it. <laughs> so uh, mod 16 is all that introduces all the class uh, changes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be very eager to see what people have to tell us about those class changes once they've been playing them for a while, um, not just on preview but on live, uh, because that feedback will be very helpful. I, you know, this is totally me making the assumption that very helpful when looking into PvP for modules that come after 16. Oh yeah, absolutely. You guys are going to come up with builds or ideas or things that we haven't thought of yet, right? Um, uh, and, and, and in fact, we actually delve into your guys' powers and look at how you guys do builds. Uh, sometimes we actually, it's almost like aliens will steal your build and, and play test it. And you guys have some really awesome builds out there. Because uh, things that we never thought of, that, like what you're using, what class you're using, which armor, which boons, like, you know, which pets. Uh, we actually uh, learn a lot from how you guys use it. And we tune the game because of that, uh, right? Because, I mean, ultimately this is your guys' game and we want to make the game fun for you. Uh, so it's a it's a kind of a back and forth learning experience, but yeah, always looking at PVP. Uh, so can we talk a little about the player scaling? Um, we did put out the the blog uh, on uh, the level and um, uh, the item level uh, scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, but those kind of questions they're going to be very good for the 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 system Reddit AMA. Uh, those are the people who do all the numbers. They're the ones that uh, have been working tirelessly on making sure those numbers work. Uh, so save those questions for, especially on a Reddit AMA, it's a, a little bit better format. They get to sit down and kind of think as they're typing it out. When you're talking, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to retrieve systems-related information, uh, at least for me. Um, let's see. Somebody was asking about item level-based PVP. Uh, with, uh, was it Zeit? Uh, it's actually something that we're looking into and have been, uh, and have been testing a little bit of. Uh, oh, by the way, will strongholds ever be upgraded? I know that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, they a, will, close but close to you because you, you, you like to think about strongholds. I do. Uh, I, I like strongholds. And in fact, I was uh, in a meeting this morning uh, with the art lead about what love we could give strongholds in the future. Uh, it, I don't know how much we'll be able uh, to give strongholds right now because I really am focusing on players and classes and, uh, and getting that balance done, plus the new end game content, plus the PvP. But strongholds is like the next tier. Um, uh, the, there's been someone who's been asking, uh, Sil Valerie about the posture bug. Uh, I believe I just saw a forum post about it earlier today. Um, and if it does not make it to my report, I will make sure to bring it up. The 2.30 meeting that Thomas and I actually have to go to is our live production meeting where we talk about, uh, current issues. So mm -hmm. that one is on my mind. Uh, so let's talk about Undermountain and beyond. So, you know... We did joke about how we weren't going to talk about M16. Uh, as you notice, it's a, it's a lie because we've been talking about it quite a bit. Uh, but I want to get more into why, yeah. like, why are we going to Undermountain and mm -hmm. not Waterdeep? Because last oh. year, uh, you know, they had the Dragon Heist in Waterdeep. Yep. So even though Undermountain, you get to it through the Yawning Portal, which is in Waterdeep. Correct. Why did we choose to go that route and not not the city of Waterdeep and have like an sure. urban? Sure. Uh, um. Uh, well, because it's not called Waterdeep and Dragons, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the short of it. Uh, the long of it is, uh, if you had seen the concept art, oh, when I got to go to Wizards of the Coast and see the, all the concept art that they had on their wall of Waterdeep, uh, uh, the idea of Waterdeep is, if you're looking, uh, for those of you who played Civ, right, Neverwinter is basically kind of in the early to late medieval period, uh, Protector's Enclave, 
where Waterdeep is basically in the Elizabethan Renaissance in terms of its uh, sieve scale, right? So looking at the artwork of what they had done to Waterdeep, it was basically Elizabethan England meets San Francisco. So on these beautiful hills and things uh, with all these great kind of uh, Victorian built or Elizabethan buildings. And, and we looked at that and it would take us three years to build that content. Uh, plus all the hills and stuff weren't exactly doing it for our game. Uh, so we looked to not be able to do that. And we, but right next to it is this awesome, the biggest dungeon <laughs> in all of Faerun, over 23 <laughs> levels, plus all the different planes that Halister can go to. Under Mountain, mm -hmm. plus Halister, come on. Uh, so we went, hey, how about over here? Now, uh, and the cool thing about that is uh, we had enough time to, uh, because of the size of M15, uh, Acquisitions Incorporated it was a little bit smaller uh, than normal, and we got to reuse a lot of environments and tell new stories in those old environments. It gave my art team uh, time to build a lot of new assets. So when you actually get into uh, Under Mountain, you're going to see new dungeon kits. You're going to see new cave and caverns kits. Uh, the whole new hub for the Yawning Portal, which is really phenomenal. Can, can uh, I can I mention the name of uh, of one of the one of the new like critters creatures? That's yes, there? if it's Umber Hulk. No. The, the, the golem, the, the butterfly. Oh, the butterfly golem. The butterfly golem. Yes. That's I, all I have I, to say. That I will... which, which I think you can see in actually one of the uh, trailers. Is it, the, is it the butterfly one? Yeah. Because it's yeah. amazing. Oh, my we goodness. Got, we got a lot of new monsters. Normally, we're lucky to get two or three new monsters a module. <clears throat> I think we've got seven new mo monsters, plus, I mean, whole critter groups. Uh, plus, the, which one of the, my favorites is the Umber Hulk. The thing is awesome, and it will kill you dead. <laughs> uh, you'll want that level 18 armor. Uh, but really fun stuff. Uh, great new rewards. So uh, five zones, people. That's yeah. pretty cool. So I also feel that if we if we ever did go, like if we had Waterdeep, like the actual city, because it is Elizabethan, we would have to have like the Bard class because of the Bard Shakespeare. Like I am. Who's who's <laughs> talking that? Like you hit me with a screw bottle last time I even mentioned the B word. Uh, uh, yeah, well, actually, and that was another thing. Uh, it's not just it was not just the um, environment. It was all the costumes too, right? A lot of the uh, water deepians uh, wear, you know, Elizabethan what, or is it water, uh, stuff. water hoovians. Water hoovians. Yeah, eh, I, I don't know. I'm from Neverwinter. Because they're like Doctor. I'm from Protectors Enclave. What do I care? <laughs> uh, the um, I'm from Black him. Dagger. Who am I kidding? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um, yeah, they they have all new costumes and stuff that make our other nobles just shameful. So that was a lot of extra work uh, where. Instead, we can have a giant purple worm, which is awesome. Right? Watered, ha watered Havian. Watered Havian. There we go. It's yeah. like it's not quite Hoovian because that mm -hmm. is Doctor Seuss, but yeah, um, we we might we might like to hear in, in Neverwinter. We do like to joke about uh, Waterdeep. Uh, um, you know, they our our current ruler of Never of of, of Neverwinter is, has some ties there. So. Exactly. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, you know, Dragon Neverwinter, and even even in uh, M15, we did uh, allude to it. Right. You saw the Xanathar mm -hmm. uh, and the big uh, heist, uh, thinking that the Stone of Golor was in uh, that that uh, Neverwinter had it all along in the bank <laughs> that you guys use. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's still stories to tell in Waterdeep. You know, there's still the whole. Uh, underneath Waterdeep, uh, you know, all the gangs and all the sewers. There's, there's some stuff there. Uh, please make the tipsy beholder as either a companion mount or pet. <laughs> that is that is a fantastic beholder. By the, we call him Buddy. That's our, like, internal name. I can't remember his real actual Xanathar name. But, um, I believe he's modeled after the Cars character. He may or may not have been modeled after a picture of Mater. Because <laughs> I said, this is what he, I'm like, come on, you need to be, yeah. Lovable and silly, but uh, he would make a great companion. That's a, I love that idea. Yeah. He'd be there support just, every time. Yeah, <laughs> he'd always have a wingman or an eye man. Um, so I did see another. I, I know that we're talking about Waterdeep a lot, but I did see a question about um, you know new role playing hubs. But since building an entire city is difficult, but we do have the Yawning Portal now. Mm -hmm. Do you see us uh, building certain iconic locations in um, the to to never to D and D? Um, that maybe we can't build the whole structure around it, but we can build just the just that one location, and we can you know use portals to travel to. Possibly, um, I don't have anything like that planned necessarily in the next module, and the module after that we have something really big planned. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, I mean, you know, there's still a lot of cool places in Undermountain that we iconic places in Undermountain we haven't gone to yet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, so here's a here's a big question. Uh, which is, in the past, uh, 
team resources is one of the things that we discussed being a limitation uh, for what can be done, mm -hmm. uh, why it takes, maybe why there's some delays in getting certain features out or getting some fixes or just the development in general. Undermountain is huge. Uh, so how did, you know, basically, how were we able to get the team to work to make such a large scale expansion given that we do have limited resources? Yeah, limited resources and we actually have a lot of new team members. I have, a, I think the uh, most veteran game designer I currently have on my team is has just a little over a year in his belt on Neverwinter, right? Yeah, I mean, that, they, they've, they've been in other studios, so they're, they're, yeah. they're veterans in terms of like game design. The, right. so, a couple of them are newer, um, so, we, so we get that perspective. But in the Neverwinter oh. team, it's, it's a lot fresher blood. Yeah, some of, my, some of my hardened veterans, like Randy Mosens, moved over to the Magic team, which is not uncommon in Cryptic. I, I, that's why I moved off of Neverwinter, was to help Star Trek get offline, right? It's uh, how we build new games and, and how we uh, basically keep the company going. Uh, although Randy was up here yes, uh, earlier today talking about storylines. So it, <laughs> once in future, you can't get rid of them, and, which is awesome. But uh, the way we did it was, uh, again, uh, I think I mentioned this a little earlier, it was M15 was a little bit smaller module. So we didn't dedicate all of our resources for M15, uh, especially on the environment team. And that gave us the ability to uh, build those new kits, which I told, talked to you about, and start off on building new zones uh, to actually get the, the gameplay space that we needed. So, uh, and we worked really hard. <laughs> it's, um, uh, but, uh, but basically we jumped in about, oh, not quite a full module, uh, extra modules worth of time, but like a half a module's worth of time was dedicated towards building this big expansion because it's that important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what are, I mean, I know you mentioned uh, some of the, cre the creatures, but what are you most looking forward, looking forward to in Waterdeep? Like what's... Well, under, sorry, Waterdeep, Undermountain. <laughs> uh, in Undermountain, yeah. Well, there's the there's the portal mimic, and there's the stairs mimic, and there's the <laughs> <laughs> press F to interact mimic. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> press F to interact mimic. I feel like so, like, the, it, this should happen that you press F and, and something the, else happens. And the bookshelf mimic, and the, uh, <laughs> the no, uh, seriously, the, um, I'm, I'm just excited for players to be able to, to actually break free and level up and to tell the stories. Uh, you're going to go through a lot of cool adventures and a lot of cool zones. There's some fun, great stories. Uh, and um, But I think, uh, in particular, I think that players are really going to enjoy the expeditions. Uh, expeditions is something that I've actually been working on for about two years, the idea and concept. And you've been kind of doing it uh, little by little, uh, first with some of the repeatable adventure quests that you had in Chult, and then with the hunts. Uh, and those ideas brought together how we could actually build the expeditions, uh, which are basically a semi-randomized dungeon uh, that will change rooms, it'll change monsters, it will change uh, boss monsters. I don't want to get too deep into it, but, but you get the idea. And you will have to go and explore uh, for ancient relics. Uh, so um, it's not just a follow the golden path. You really need to, to, to branch out and explore. Plus, uh, like the hunts, it will actually have its own um, uh, system where you, the players have agency for risk and reward. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, uh, I don't think we've announced, uh, like, we announced that Satine was here to do voice recording on yes. Satine Phoenix. Uh, but uh, we, I don't think we've announced who she was here to do recording for. So, but it's, it's tied to the expeditions. Indeed so it is. That, is. that is a contact that you will be hearing from a lot. Um, and just based on listening to the recording, it's, it's, it sounds like a really awesome story. And uh, just uh, so just surrounding not just the act of going on expeditions, but as someone who loves storylines and wants to be given a reason, not just, you know, go collect 10 branches and bring that to me and I'll give you some gold. That After a while, I need some story as to why I'm doing that. So it's nice to have that. Yeah, it, it's really fun. Um, a, when I get my QA team, because, you know, we usually like we're playing through it and we get feedback and timing and stuff like that. And uh, I remember being down in one of the play tests and, uh, and with the QA team watching them afterwards. And I'm like, okay, how long did that take? We're like, what? I don't know, let's do it again. And they were just jumping right back into it. It was, uh, uh, it's really fun. Uh, and it's challenging. Uh, and uh, and you, like the hunts, you guys can uh, even make it even more challenging. But, you know, more reward, but more risk. I'm seeing, so I'm seeing a lot of questions that are uh, still very specific to systems uh, that uh, I would rather the people who know the nitty gritty answer that one. So please uh, save them either when the uh, when preview is open and we open the feedback threads on the preview forums, 
or for the uh, Reddit AMA on the 14th of March. Yep. Someone asked, will there be uh, new mounts? Yep, there's a couple of new mounts coming out. Pretty awesome. Is one of them that's snail? Can I say it? Um, I think that's the, in actually the adventure back already. You can talk about that. You mean the black snail? Yeah, the black. We're, we're whispering. We're whispering out loud. About <laughs> one of our cool, one of our favorite mounts. <laughs> uh, any? I did not get an answer on the set bonus for CT8, but weapons yet, I believe. Uh, I will check my notes. Uh, if I did, it probably happened during a meeting, and I wrote it down in my little notebook. Uh, so I will check there, and if I didn't, then I will hunt somebody down. Oh, for the, uh, for the call to arm set bonus? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I get questions during uh, my streams that I write them down. I then ask right after my streams, and then I write down the answers, but I don't remember that I wrote that down. Mm -hmm. so. Someone asks, uh, new companions? Absolutely. We can't do a module without new bounce and new companions. Some mm -hmm. cool stuff. And, again, you know, there's a lot of cool new monsters. Uh, legendary Goat. That would be awesome. We do not have Legendary Goat, but <laughs> one of the new companion sets is actually, I think, one of my absolute new favorites. I'm super excited about it. Could the legendary goat be like uh, they're like the the fourth tier uh, skin level be a satyr? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> we need a mimic slayer title. Ooh, what are you doing to my mimics? What? What? <laughs> Why, yeah, yeah. Is there not a mimic slayer title? I thought there was. If there isn't, there well, should then be. Yes, and I've there written should them be. down. There should uh, be. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we've got about 14 minutes left. Uh, I'm trying to uh, focus on questions that we actually can give an answer mm -hmm. to, but a lot of them really are. I mean, I know you're thirsty for information, uh, and uh, someone did mention release all the blogs at once. Uh, so honestly, one of the reasons I don't do that is just information overload. Um, it's There's not enough focus, uh, and that is a disservice to both the, the people reading them because there's just too much. Uh, and it's also a disservice to the devs who put a lot of time into writing these blogs. Um, and uh, we want the audience to be focusing on one day, uh, of what that topic is about that day. Uh, I see questions about the Boon blog, the images not working. Uh, I will check. I know that we were going to update the images because there were ones that had some placeholder icons that we didn't want there. Uh, so I will go and check on that one after my meeting. Um, so do we have any plans to provide better loot drops? Uh, yeah, the the entire loot table system has actually been uh, revamped. All the items have actually been revamped. Uh, so go. so yes, better loot drops, especially in the uh, in the seventy eighty stuff. Uh, uh, mythic um, mimic mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Just like eat you. I don't know about that one. Uh, it's going fast. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> you guys and your goats. So, do we want to talk a little bit more about the expeditions and the risk reward, or do, or do um, I mean, I don't know how much. Well, we've got a blog coming out on it, right? Yeah, yeah those So, um, I can I can mention a little bit. Basically, uh, uh, all throughout um, Undermountain, there are runes. I mean, Halister works with runes, and there's a big story arc about uh, runes and portals and stuff as well, which I'm not going to spoil. But uh, but instead of uh, Taroka cards, you'll actually be uh, gaining uh, different runic shards and attuning them. To actually use as kind of your risk reward system. So I'm seeing a question, uh, which is uh, kind of talked about. Well, we talked about a little bit, but any significant gameplay shifts uh, you'd like to see, or you see, you see Neverwinter head towards? Yeah, actually, uh, well, and this is systems based, but also uh, very big on the design end, and that is to actually, as we're rebuilding and redesigning the uh, the different classes, really trying to make them feel like their class. Uh, as opposed to just everybody being, you know, uh, thrown out DPS or what have you. So the healers really feel like healing. The tanks are starting to feel more tankier. Uh, the DPS guys really do have a, a good quick punch, but then got to get out of there before, you know, uh, before they get taken down. Um, and also uh, being able to build uh, your different paragon paths to give yourself different roles, right? So, uh, you know, paladins, I believe, can be... You know, you can actually use them as a healer class or as a, as a DPS class, and that actually opens up the world for like when we have our cues when you need different uh, roles. And that was a big a big thing for us really to to go back to the old school roots and when we first started Neverwinter and giving those classes that feeling uh, kind of got lost there on it. Also, um, a little bit about the the timing of the powers and how you're using them mm -hmm. uh, to make them feel more impactful. Uh, the chat is going fast. I haven't activated uh, slow mode for chat yet just because uh, we only have a few minutes left. 
um, but uh, has been pointed out. Uh, this we are making a local recording of uh, this stream, uh, and one of my to-do projects uh, for community is to make uh, all past uh, um, Driftwood Tavern presents since we started them, plus uh, this uh, state of the game stream available on uh, YouTube, so that players can go ahead and watch it again. So questions that we missed, um, we can go back and look them over and read them. Um, and, yeah, and so every, I do have to answer that. Every, every, I smile every time I see a goat comment. I'm actually not smiling over the goats, though it does. It's part of it. I'm smiling because I have a little squishy in my hand, and I'm just squishing it. <laughs> so what is it? It's a unidinosaur. So this is a, a little it's rainbow. It's supposed to be a, I think, a unicorn, but it, this ridge looks like a dinosaur. So it's my squishy toy. Cool. Uh, and I smile every time I squish it. <laughs> Uh, interpret that as you will. <laughs> um, let's see. We're trying to read the post. They're going by, by quickly. Uh, can we? Can console please get a way to take screenshots without the HUD? Uh, I don't know if that's a limitation of the consoles themselves. It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. We can do it. We can do it on PC. Let's write that one down. That's a yep. good good suggestion. Thanks. Yep, I agree. <laughs> Actually writing that down? Well, that was too hard. Uh, is there a place in the forum where you can uh, submit ideas for stuff we'd like to see in the game other than the forum? Uh, the forum really is the best place because that's where we have uh, most eyes on. Uh, there is also because we are uh, on Reddit too. We yeah. also yeah, I mean on Reddit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are a licensed product, so we we can't we can get feedback. We can get hey, players would like to see this, but like. Writing like a specific story or campaign or like creating a whole new monster, uh, that would not be up to us. That is a Wizards of the Coast because it is their product, and we can't just take unsolicited uh, uh, feedback that way. Yeah, um, there's a whole legal ramifications to that. Uh, as someone who's worked with IPs for many years, it we love ideas, we love feedback. We just can't take them as like official submissions of ideas. Uh, I've seen uh, several uh, posts about transmutes. Um, this is actually one of those things that's bugging me, and I want to try and fix it as well. Um, we really are looking at ideas to make transmutes a lot easier and a lot more fun. I, I think there's like a really cool orc blade that I got in Tower District that I think looks really awesome, and I hate transmuting it all the time. So I, I, so I want to make that so it's easier for me. If it's easier for me, it's easier for you. Uh, I think that we really, uh, and I know that my uh, lead system designer, Jared, feels the same way. So it is something that we're looking at as a quality of life thing to fix transmutes. I'm also seeing uh, gender neutral clothing. Uh, so that is something that uh, Tara Mac and I, it's uh, like a, a big issue for us. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, like that's kind of like our own little pet project. Uh, I believe the, the main issue comes from the fact that the, the, the models, the male and female models, have different structure. Yeah. And a lot of the clothing was developed in the past, uh, and sometimes we, we kind of use that base to create new ones. Uh, so it would have to be, this is my very bad understanding of how animation and how uh, so far art you're works. On yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, making sure that any new clothing that is developed can still conform to the existing uh, structures for characters. Because right now the bandwidth to create to re to revamp the, the entire structure for the character design would be would be a little more time consuming. Yeah, it's it's based on the actual uh, body frames and how they set up. If you actually try to put male armor on the female body, it doesn't look gender neutral. It just looks really big and saggy and doesn't actually fit the bones of the character itself. Uh, so we have been playing around with trying to make that happen. Um, if you actually look at a lot of the gear uh, coming out in some of the new armor sets, it actually is more. Um, Robish, I guess is the word I'm looking for, and you know, tunicky and robish, so it does fall more into that general, uh, gender neutral kind of flair, or not flair, because it's straight up and down. Uh, so similar questions. There are going to be a move in the future to recreate dragonborn body frames to better allow them to use helmets. Uh, their head is one of you know, it's an iconic thing about being a dragonborn. You have a dragon head. Uh, a lot the helms, first of all, would cover it, so. I'm still to... I'm still working with the, with the, the con. Uh, I'm a dwarf player, and I can't even get helmets that fit my dwarf nose right now. <laughs> so you think that's bad? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, so the dragonborn exactly. It's dragonborn or dragonborn, and it just looks cool with their heads, right? That's kind of how we had to do it. It was kind of the con, uh, what's the word? I mean, consolation uh, for bringing the concession. That, concession. Thank concession. you uh, for bringing for bringing that out there. We needed to 
just make that happen. As a matter of fact, we have looked at other uh, races and have uh, not signed off on them because of either the head or the body shapes. Um, one of the things that Wizards of the Coast is very uh, um, upfront about is that uh, certain beast classes don't have male and female bodies. And our game system is built on male and female bodies, so we can't necessarily build them. Uh, when my dwarf puts his helmet on, uh, the beard disappears. <laughs> yeah, it needs to I, shave. I mostly don't wear that a, be a helmet. I, I actually wear Valinda's crown. <laughs> it's kind of my full fun thing to wear. Uh, let's see. Uh, so making pre seventy content more worthwhile. Uh, uh, so we actually are, so part of M16 is something that we have called the Directed Endgame Experience. Uh, actually, I think we're going to be calling it the Challenge Campaign? Yeah, Challenge Campaign, challenge, exactly. Challenge campaign. Yeah, the Challenge Campaign, exactly. Sorry, I'm using in-game speak, <laughs> in-house okay. in, in speak. Uh, yeah, the Challenge Campaigns, where uh, it gives you uh, very good challenges and incentivizes you to go back and play a lot of the campaigns requests that you may not have finished to go pick up those boons uh, and... Um, and it will actually item item level scale you, which somebody was talking about that before, uh, down to those to, to give it a challenge. So hopefully that will refresh and uh, and add things up. Uh, plus, actually, we've uh, gone through through October and uh, through some of the stuff that we've even done in M16, hitting pain points of, of uh, content where uh, it just needed to be cleaned up here and there uh, throughout the leveling. That's one of the things I've been doing as I've been, because uh, we've built new classes, basically, with new powers. Uh, my job as lead is I've been going through and playing from tutorial all the way up with the different classes and finding out when's the best place for this power to be released, how does this, uh, how does this system feel here, and while doing that I've been finding bugs in the game and, and fixing them. Uh, let's see. Uh, there were questions that I missed. Um, there was one specific one. A lot of questions oh. about Mythic Mounts in M16. Yes, that's the one. I'm not going to answer that question. You'll have to stick around and see. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get Mubot open um, for the last couple minutes of the stream. What is Mubot? It's what I use to do giveaways. Oh, cool. Why is it not called Goatbot? <laughs> Goats! <laughs> Oh my goodness, goats are the you know I, I love goats uh, and they're no. They're, Someone's they're asking that we don't ruin the Guardian Fighter M16 as a Guardian Fighter slash Fighter the new name. Uh, I can tell you that it's actually really a lot of fun to play the new fighter. Um, I'm starting to feel a lot tankier and uh, and I uh, it's just fun. We've got we've got it back down to where it really feels good. They and and you're really survival in PvP so far. <laughs> Why? Why have you changed everything? Uh, there we go. So we will not be doing a giveaway right Aww. now because they changed uh, how it functions, and I don't really want to spend too much time experimenting uh, while I'm on stream. So, so oh, well, here's something. Somebody asked for a goblin race. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, uh, throw out other ideas. What races you guys uh, would like to see in the game? What races? A druid class is not a race. <laughs> Gnomes? Excellent. <laughs> Saurians? What else we got? Dragoliths? Okay. Actually, Druids and monks, not races. We're going to try this. We're going to try this. We're going to try this giveaway. Thank you all for... Uh, Sticking here. If it doesn't work, I, I will test it later. Uh, so. Warhorn, Janassi, all sorts of things. <laughs> Bugbears. That'd be awesome. Can't do Bugbears. Love to do Tabaxi, but can't because they're beasts. All right. Enter uh, hashtag Mimics in chat uh, to uh, to enter uh, to win a either a Rainbow Starry Panther on Xbox uh, and PC and... Probably the uh, Cerulean Unicorn on PS4. So hashtag Mimics. Oh, I'm seeing all the hashtag Mimics. I'm like, I don't think we can do a Mimic race. I don't know where you put a helmet. Yeah. We're going to give it a few <laughs> more seconds. Because uh, chat right now. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. I like this. Is that, the numbers are going up. Yep. All right. Let me see. 
Okay, we're gonna give it about 15 more seconds. How fun, woo, look at those numbers going. I know. Good job, guys. Cthulhu-like race, no. Be like, be like an illithid, that'd be kind of cool. Talk about your beard getting stuck in your helmet. Okay, we're gonna be drawing uh, a winner. And the winner is... Is Gwedry. Gwedry. G-W-E-D-D-R-Y. Gwedry, congratulations. Congrats. Uh, you uh, won uh, either uh, Rainbow Starry Panther on Xbox or PC. Just uh, whisper me what platform you are on or the unicorn on PS4. So go ahead and send us a message uh, telling me what platform and uh, we will get it to you likely after my meeting since I have to run like now. Oh my gosh. Uh, so. <laughs> it is meeting time. Gwedry, congratulations once again. Uh, we have to run, so thank you everybody who tuned in. Um, yeah, thanks so much. It was awesome. Uh, and uh, just stay tuned for more events as we start getting more hype for uh, M16. I am super excited to excited. get you guys into M16. and. Uh, uh, in Undermountain. I think you're really going to enjoy it. All right. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Thanks.